Sloth is opening up the wall here for us today and look at the hero equipment that he has active. The brand new Vamp Stash and the Rage Vial, the OG Queen abilities, but look at that warden there. Yeah, that Warden, a healing tome is going to be here as we're getting ready for this first attack. And Judo is here to kick it off with some Super Dragons. Yes, Super Dragons. Let's see how they go. They were very popular lower in those Town Halls. Let's see how it kicks off here at Town Hall 16. Judo is starting with a bit of funneling there on that 9 o'clock side to create the pathing for those dragons, as well as with that flame flinger on that north hand side. He has well identified that there are no defenses that can reach out just yet, so he can clear up very nicely with that baby dragon and the flame flinger and the queen charge to keep all of those dragons nice and compact. And he pulls that queen back with the recall spell, sending her down to the bottom side. Now we're going to see these super dragons right on in between that where that queen now is. Where he's going to have to use that warden. Remember, he doesn't have a raid ship. He has the warden healing tome, which at max will be able to heal for 25 seconds. As here is the warden. He is down, moving his way towards the town hall. Yeah, you're correct. All those super dragons, they're entering that town hall compartment. A few loons, they are pulling some traps en route to that town hall. The poison spell tower did go off, so those dragons will be taking a little bit of damage as they approach the town hall. He froze it as well for those solar beams, and he will have to warden through the Giga Poison to try and keep these Super Dragons alive to push through the heart of P. Castro's base. Yeah, notice he has poison spells on the defensive side. The Ricochet Cannon is hitting this Queen, doing a lot of damage, and the Unicorn goes down as the Queen's ability goes off with the King off to the far right side. And I'm Diggy on the King here, Coco? Yeah, the Diggy's a really good support pet to stun those defenses and alleviate a little pressure off of some of those hard-hitting defenses. So we'll see how that helps against those Expos there on that right-hand side compartment. But as you can see, the majority of those dragons are down. We have one more dragon coming out of that Flame Flinger to help for cleanup. Judo's trying to keep these heroes alive with that invisibility spell. He still has the King ability and the Royal Champion there as well to pop later on but there's so many heavy hitting defenses still in the core of this base yeah with the king ability but no earthquake boots for this king so he can't open these walls which would be perfect in this situation with that king ability but unfortunately remember it's a vamp stash so he gets to slowly heal up every single time that king swings his sword not just for the ability duration the whole attack as the rc ability skips across come on judo no with 14 seconds we have the ricochet cannon on the backside, and that spear fox did go down, and his raw champion doesn't have enough time left to help finish this one off. And Judo comes so close with a 95% two star there. Ability essentially for P. Castro is all the same, all normal. The regular Warden Eternal Tome, the regular Life Gem for that Warden as well. Of course, the Royal Champion doesn't have any abilities at the moment, but here are special hero equipment abilities, I should say, as P. Castro is coming in with two Root Riders. And look at this. He's only got two healers, so when he pops that Queen ability, he can get an additional three to have five for a Queen Charge. Yeah, that does save some extra slots there as well for the army composition, which is really nicely done here. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of loons that are going to be powering through this base. So let's see how those defenses hold up against these loons. He started with the queen there already with that ability pop. So she's already got those healers down, those Coco loons at hand as well, scouting for any potential traps because he doesn't want to lose those healers early. And with that queen going through the eagle artillery, the flame flinger continue to try to make its way towards the bottom side, eventually trying to path into the town hall. And we have the warden with the king off to the right side to move into the multi-archer tower. Because remember, the only way to create a new multi-archer tower is by taking two maxed archer towers and combining them. There's no way to go back. It's a permanent new defense at town 16. 
That queen is taking quite a bit of damage there. He used an invisibility to try and keep her alive. And now with an extra spell there, we got that skeleton spell to distract those defenses and a rage. We get that queen back to full health with those additional healers as well. And everything still powering through that right hand side. The town hall beam starting to do some damage. It is about to go down from that flame flinger, securing that extra star on the board here. Yeah, with the balloons now coming into the left side with a haste going towards that scatter shot. The Queen's continuing her charge, taking that down. The Flame Flinger is still up now. Finally opens with a couple rocket loons that come out of here. And Pia Castro looking to charge right through Lex's base, getting a three star. Oh, look at that. P. Castro making it look easy. Wait. He has 10 balloons. I'm not even noticing that 10 balloons still left. This is not even fair. Yeah, he's swagging the Royal Champion, swagging some troops as well as some spells there. P. Castro absolutely overwhelming that base there. First trip. See how they go through this one. There's not that many wall compartments in a ring base. So let's see how they go for those defenses first. Now we've got Orange Juice in that first Root Rider on the left. And he's got those super archers on here as well, which have those extra ranges on them, doing some damage past all of these root riders. We got those ice golems to tank there as well. The blimp's gonna come in here too, so he's gonna use that warden ability early. Yeah. He did bring both of those tomes, so I don't know if we didn't get as much heal value from that tome, but we definitely got the blimp all the way to the heart of this base to secure the town hall. The blimp does make it to the town hall. Does it take it down, though? That's the question. Yes, the town hall goes down, and that warden healing tome is healing everything up as he continues his way through because it lasts so much longer than, than the eternal tome, so it can keep healing the troops up as you make your way around, raging up the Electro Titans, some super archers, and he still has a poison a skeleton a couple freezes that move through as he continues away to the top that rc ability does go off his loop going to be able to help defend against this mass root riders he still got the queen there on that left hand side but she's taking so much damage that final skeleton spell deployed on the south hand side but loop is already cheering he knows that it's not going to be enough to power through those last few defenses the monolith hits so hard the scatter shot's still there and that expo even with that queen ability to with those extra healers it's not going to be easy to power through those last few defenses. No, those defenses are so leveled up right there. Have a few super archers to the top side trying to pick off every remaining building. But unfortunately, Orange Juice not able to get a three star. With P. Castro getting a three star for Clash Champs with so much swag. I can't wait to see what Clash Champs are going to bring in their next attack. But remember... They have the disadvantages of they can't bring the same attack strategy at all for the rest of this match. And they must swap hero equipment. That queen in combination with some earthquake and lightning spells to help take down some critical defenses. Let's see if he's bringing some lightning. And no, I don't see any lightning here. So he won't be able to go. Wait. Oh, it's it's Pato that's going up against Cla uh, Bash here. I was like, wait, Clash Bashing is doing a skelly donut? I would have been so impressed. Yeah, me too. I mean, I need him to teach me a skelly donut. I'm the worst at skelly donuts, but let's see what happens with this one. Patalino has got the king on that south hand side. He's got one of those buildings down there with those sneaky goblins there. So the king has access to go into this compartment here. As you can see, the brand new archer tower there hitting hard on the king already with that expo. And we've also got the royal champion with the brand new pet going invisible over and over again. However, it looks like she, the, the new pet is about to go down here as well. Yeah, once that Spear Fox goes down, that means the Royal Champion will no longer become invisible as the King's Earthquake boots did go off, but unfortunately not able to open up that multi-target Inferno as the Queen continues to push her way in towards the Ricochet Cannon, the Enemy Queen, and that Scattershot. He pops the ability soon through here. It will skip straight across this base, all the way across, and help damage and take down building because a max level 18 giant arrow does 1,950 damage to every single building or defense that it goes through. There it goes. It didn't snipe off any of those major defenses. Still did quite a bit of damage, though. 
And let's see how it goes with the Lalo now, because we do have a decent pathing now, and obviously the Warden will be coming in with the major group of loons, which are pathing for the Town Hall. Once it starts to go active, we have to make sure that Pato uses those freezes to stop those solar beams from clearing out those loons and warden through the Giga Poison from the Town Hall again to clear up on that right-hand side of the base. Yeah, with that Warden Eternal Tome trying to protect these balloons, but the Town Hall finally now goes down as he's going to path his way to uh, the multi-archer tower, the multi-target in front of the enemy Royal Champion on the backside. But if he drops Headhunters there, you got to watch out for the Ricochet Cannon. It's going to bounce to the Headhunters each, but he does take out the enemy RC. Yeah, those last few loons doing some damage. The scatter shot is not able to target them all at one go, so they will bypass that rage, uh, the the old ring that the ring of uh, death from the scatter shot as they path towards those last few defenses. Now clean up, scattered around the base. Twenty seconds on the clock for five buildings. Pato has done it as well for the World Champions wait, wait, Clash wait. Champ. The Dark Elixir Storage. The Dark Elixir Storage. That's <gasps> the question. The That's king. the question. The king is absorbing the shots. Is he going to get any celebrating? And with three seconds left, the minions and take the building down. The tomes. Yeah, that giant arrow. I'm going to pay attention to see what he's going to do. The healing tome for the warden. And that vamp stash, every time you swing that sword for the king, you're going to be gaining health. And at max level 18, you're going to gain 300 hit points every single hit. Because when it's only level 1, you gain about 60. It's like nothing close. So it's very important to be upgrading your hero equipment. It's going to play such a critical role as Bash is charging through the top side, doing a queen charge hybrid. Let's see, Bash, if you can pull off a three star. Quite the OG strategy here as well, so I'm very excited to see how this one breaks down here at Town Hall 16. Bash has opened up these walls beautifully for the Queen to get access to the Town Hall compartment. Still holding onto that ability now, so we'll wait and see how that pushes through the Town Hall. Does a lot of damage. He's trying to send in some Coco Loons to try and test for Ooh. any traps. He finds the Tornado Trap uh -oh, uh -oh, as we're uh -oh, going uh -oh, in range of the Town Hall. Freezes it because those healers are too close. Let's see how this queen charge uh, continues. Pato's like, no, 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 it's not going to have a chance. The healer's getting hit by the... Oh, no, the sneaking <gasps> air mines. The healer's going down fast with the queen with her giant arrow. It flies across the middle of this base. Let's see how much of an impact that does. He and Bash uses a rage for that queen as the warded eternal tome goes off for the hybrid. Yeah, the hybrid are now passing through that left-hand side. Scatter's gonna go down. Once that Warden Tome goes off, though, we've got that multi-inferno that's going to do some damage. It did get targeted by the arrow. There are some builder huts there. Don't know if it took too much health back. We're distracting the monolith on the south hand side with the another skeleton spell as the king's still clearing up with that drill on the south hand side as well. Yeah, that king's kind of trying to make his way through to the bottom. Remember, that vamp stash is on the king, so he's going to slowly try to gain health as it continues through the bottom side with the hybrid continue off to the enemy queen compartment. That battle drill does take out that monolith, and the diggy is now paired up with the warden. The RC, come on, take down the enemy queen. He pops the ability and skip it across. Does Bash have a chance? The scatter shots down, what? clean up on the right hand side. The king, he still has the phoenix, he, even though he is low. Whoa. And the final defense is on the north hand side, <laughs> will go down. The royal champion looking so strong there. She's at full health, she still has the new fox there. Bash is happy and he's got it in the bag there for the creators. The first triple on the board for the creators. This is exactly what they needed. If there's any pro teams out there, you know, looking to sign Mr. Clash bashing. Look at how good he is with that hybrid. Uh, we got the Rage Gem on here as well on that warden. The OG Queen ability there. And let's see what Leo brings with those troops. We've got a bunch of healers and we've got those brand new Root Riders here again. And I also spy a recall spell down there, Carbon. Yeah, one recall spell to utilize here as that queen is going to look to take out the... Oh, man, that multi-arch tower. It's doing so much damage. Remember, it does three shots. And if two things get in range, 
two shots will go to one target one shot will go to the other it will start splitting its shots if three targets get within range then it splits all three shots one to each target or if just one all three shots go to it's it's crazy the multi arch tower is going to completely change the way you're trying to defend your bases and the ricochet cannon as it gets closer it's going to be bow oh, there is the recall spell there the scatter is going to hit one healer here unfortunately the angle is off and he's going to lose it <laughs> yeah, we have to be careful of those two ricochet cannons there next to the town hall. They will bounce off of that first two troop and then do some damage for two further ones there as well. Leo did notice that there are no expos though and there are no mortars there on that left hand side. So the flame flinging can do quite a bit of damage if he avoids that king there. Queen's still pushing towards that right-hand side, clearing out some more of those defenses. We've pulled those Clan Castle troops, though, which might do a heap of damage here. Oh, that Queen almost forced to ability using the invis. Wow, how did he know that? But the super minion shots just wore off so the Queen can continue to get healed up as he's then going to come in with four Root Riders through the base as the Queens continue to charge away through towards Eagle and the multi-target Inferno. Yeah, thankfully she's regaining all of that health back. That was so close at forcing that ability. You can see Judo was really hoping that it was going to go to ability there. She's now still taking a lot of damage in here with only one more rage. We're going to force that ability here so that all of these archers can spawn and take a little bit of damage here off of that queen. We've got everything going for that town hall compartment now with uh, the flame flinger popping. Freeze on the oh, town hall. However, wait, wait, the wait, wait, tornado wait, wait, wait. trap... Oh, oh no! The king came back alive with the phoenix and secured the town hall. And that might be all that he needed there to allow his now queen, which he went to the bottom side, continuing to try to make his way through. The royal champions go to the top side. The root riders are coming through the base. And Leo is looked at another three-star for Clash Champs. Brilliant job there, Leo. Clash Champs absolutely demolishing all of these creator bases. <laughs> Judo hiding his camera there. Are you with if he's doing that queen charge in there, he has to make sure that he places those loons to pull the traps that he knows exactly where they are or avoid them as a whole as we knew that there was a lot around some of those compartments and he's going directly in to that queen there on the right hand side towards that town hall there is an invisibility spell tower there so he's gonna have to make sure to freeze that in time before it makes that town hall invisible if he wants his queen to take it down yeah with that queen charging through the defensive king he knows exactly where the tesla farm is he knows exactly where the seeking air mines are so he can try to bait and pull traps as he drops the balloons onto the can at the bottom side. Needs his queen to get into the town hall and then pull her back with that recall. Yeah, queen got quite low there, but <laughs> that rage came in clutch. A beautiful Coco Loon as he knew there were some seeking air mines in there. Queen's now starting to do some damage on the town hall. The invisibility spell tower was frozen like we mentioned as well and he's then going to recall the queen and redeploy her on that left hand side he's also cleared out some of those buildings which means she is going to go towards the eagle artillery and he's sending in the king for that scatter shot yeah that king's gonna move into the enemy royal champion while his queen is continuing her way to the left side all these things going at the same time he doesn't have any skeleton spells to distract the ricochet cannon as the battle drill remember if it goes and touches a wall where it's landing, it will open those walls. So if it touches towards that ricochet cannon, it will allow the king to continue his way through as a defensive rage now goes off for both those multis in the core. And no, not only are both of those multi-infernos raged up, but the new archer tower there is also raged up. So all three of those archers are doing so much more damage. He forces that warden tome to help power through the heart of Selino's base. Oh, this is getting tough. Everything's slowly taking more and more damage and still have got quite a few defenses on the north hand side as well as the queen. The two spells still at hand, the invisibility there to stop the damage coming in on that monolith 
and one freeze still at hand. Yeah, with a freeze that you can use. Oh, you sit on the outside to protect that Dragon Rider as he's going to make his way to the Ricochet Cannon. That Queen's continuing way to the top side. He's got the RC ability to skip on through, and Itsu is getting a three star here for the creators. He'll have to path his way back to that clan castle, but plenty of time. He can take a deep breath because he was the most nervous. He got the traps. He got the location of the traps. They were the one, this was the one base they selected, and he did not want to fail after being given where the traps were. Well done, Itsu. Here we go. And Selenio is looking for his revenge against Itsu. Itsu did triple Selenio, and here we go. Selenio's got the earthquake boots paired here with this attack. We have a queen charge, we have 10 balloons, a root rider, and. A couple super barbarians here. Yeah, Queen Charge starting off there on that right-hand side with that Flame Flinger. There is a Mortar there and an Expo. So Selino's done it very well to make sure that the Queen can go in here and clear out both of those defenses. That could take down that Flame Flinger on that right-hand side. He sees that she's taking a lot of damage because of those new Archer Towers. He, she, he rages her up. She managed to get through these with absolute no problem whatsoever. Yeah, that queen's continuing her charge, and he's also got a P.E.K.K.A. in the mix here, as this queen is continuing this push through. A lot of archers coming out, rages up this queen yet again. Ice golems as well. Can he use the final wall break? Yes, does it go in towards the town hall to open up that whole middle compartment? It does indeed. Yeah, having access to this huge compartment is going to be very, very nice here. For Selino, there's so many major defenses in there. Already dealt with those clan castle troops as well. There is a sweeper knocking back these healers, so it's limiting how much health that that queen gets back. And there goes the earthquake boots, giving the king access to this compartment as well. He has got low health, but the phoenix, the pre-existing pet from Town Hall 15 there as well, is also going to keep that king alive, but those traps are going to be in his way. Yeah, now with that Warden down with some Root Riders, he's got that Rage Gem with that Warden. You're definitely going to want to be upgrading this as one of maybe your first hero equipments to upgrade to max. Because at max level 18, it does a 50% damage increase to everything in that circle of the Rage Gem. It's going to help you push through, especially let's say you want to do a Dragon Attack. It's so useful for things like that or any attack that is moving in with this Warden as that Queen ability is forced as healers are now popping up with that queen. Yeah, he had some root riders in there that did break all those walls open to the monolith, but they took so much damage there. He's still trying to get that monolith down with some additional loons and that barbarian there. The single inferno goes down there as well as the royal champion is invisible from the spirit fox with those heroes still remaining. Few troops, royal champion has her ability. Selino has done it again for Clash Champs. The world champions coming in with yet another dominating triple, putting them in health every single hit in the attack. Make sure to keep an eye out in chat as well. You can see those brand new skins here on Lexnos's Heroes. There will be a few links in chat there, which are first come, first serve. Make sure to press it very quickly if you want early access to some of those skins. Yeah, with Lexnos deciding to go in with seven Root Riders, four Rages in this attack, taking the healer. It's going to be that Queen Charge for his Queen, making his way to that right side into the enemy Royal Champion. Did open up that wall, and he, wait, does he have a Log Launcher? So he's going to look to open up all the way across the base for this Queen Charge, potentially? Yeah, that could be. There's a lot of compartments here that are very small and very tight. So you can see that it could get some really good value here. Queen is taking quite a bit of damage. So Lex does deploy another Rage to keep that Queen alive. Few Coco Loons to test for traps as well as he enters this compartment. Another one coming in and there goes that Rage Spell Tower doing a lot more damage on that Queen trying to push through that right-hand side compartment. Oh, the Headhunter is almost forcing that Queen ability, but it doesn't. The Queen is hanging on for dear life. No, the Queen ability was forced as he's now entering and into the Ricochet Cannon as a Log Launch is coming into the multi-target Infernos in the core. Yeah, the Log Launch is going to do some damage on those defenses as well. And he had a Quake just to make sure that these walls had enough damage on them to open them up. 
He's raging that queen through yet again. This is a very time-consuming queen charge. However, it is taking a lot down. The log launcher finished off everything in these compartments, which means the queen can now continue her way through to that town hall. And we've got all of those root riders starting on that left-hand side with that warden tome there as well. Make sure to note that we've got that rage spell here as well from the from the Rage Gem from the uh, Wardens. That's going to make sure that all of these Root Riders are doing some more damage as they power through those defenses. But well, we do have the Invisibility spell next to the Town Hall. You have to be very careful. He rages up this Queen. Need to freeze that Town Hall in the Invis before it activates here. There you go. But he, remember, if, if a Root Rider destroys the Invis, that'll be a problem. It'll get activated immediately. The Town Hall's going down. You can see Lexno celebrating, and he is delivering a three-star, putting the creators to 13 stars in this match. What a really cool use of the Log Launcher and Earthquake to snipe those core Inferno Towers, which now means that Clash Champs, they need a two-star to win this match. But really, they are going for perfection. Can they get the perfect war at Town Hall 16? Seeing them all throughout all the previous Town Halls, so it'll be interesting to see how he uses that healing tome on the Warden. Because remember, when you pop that healing tome for the Warden, it's going to last quite a long time, 25 seconds, when you're pushing it up to level 18. But one thing to note, you do want to upgrade that regular Warden Eternal Tome. So you can get that extra half a second if you get it to level 18. As Loop is indeed coming in with that blimp. Balloons going all the way across. Well, wait, not going all the way to the town. He's landing a little bit early here. Yeah, usually when you have that blimp immune to damage, it goes all the way to the town hall. But he popped it a little bit early here, clearing out that scattershot compartment. Unfortunately, not getting both of them down just yet. A few of those Yeti mites still hitting that second scattershot to try and get it down. Will it be enough, though? I don't think so. Ooh, as these ice golems are coming out to the edge, one of them is very low health. But he's raging up this queen, charging her way into that multi-archer tower, doing quite a bit of damage as he's dropping a few balloons now to try to test for some seeking air mines. Yeah, the queen's got some nice pathing here. As you saw in the heart of this base, the second scatter shot did go down at the very end there, clearing that compartment out very nicely. Queen is continuing her pathing now. We need another wall breaker to open up walls. Luke does deploy it. Path is toward that town hall area giving the queen access to the town hall now very nice freeze on the ricochet cannon as that queen continues her push in towards the town hall as we are seeing the raw champ to the top side the king up there as well and the skeleton spell to try to distract as the queen ability goes off to help secure the two star pudding clash champs the 14 stars in this match at least but he's going for the three yeah, he's going all out for the end of this one to end strong with that World Championship title. And let's get that monolith down. The Royal Champion is now jumping forwards, getting that monolith down, going invisible here as well, whilst getting distracted by a few of those skeletons. So the Fox is making her invisible very nicely to protect her from those heavy hitting town hall beams. And everything's pathing towards those last few defenses to absolutely clear this base. Loop is already celebrating a bit there on that right hand side because his heroes are enough to clear it off here. Swagging off that Royal Champion ability right at the very, very end here. And this is why they are the world champions. They are just dominating through Town Hall 15 and as well now here at Town Hall 16. And the champions indeed. A perfect war for Clash Champs. Taking the title here and putting on their medals. Well deserved. Clash Unleashed. Town Hall 16 fully equipped champs right there. Going from winning the Town Hall 15 World Championship to winning the very first Town Hall 16 event. You know, no, it's perfect.